This is one of those games that every chess player should know. It's a game so famous and so beautiful that it's often cited as the prettiest, most picturesque, most beautiful queen sacrifice ever played in all of chess history. Now, Frank Marshall was playing with the black pieces. He rendered the masterpiece on the board. His opponent was a Russian master, a guy by the name of Stefan Levitsky. Now, this is going back 100 years, more than. It's 1912. They're playing in the former German Empire in a big round robin master tournament. And this thing was over in just 23 moves or something like that. A game so good that when the final move was played, they say that the board was showered with gold coins by the onlookers. So let's check this one out. We see d4 played and e6 from Marshall. An invitation to go back into the French, which white duly obliges with e4. d5 is now the French defence. Main line, we get knight c3, inviting the razor sharp winnower or knight f6. Not that this stuff always had a name back then, right? But here we see c5. Not a move you see a lot these days at master level because white can take and already give black this nasty isolated pawn gang up quite quickly. But that wasn't played in this game. We see knight f3, knight c6, now takes on d5 and bishop e2. A more modest move. You can go bishop b5 there, pressure this knight already. Knight f6 now played, castles, bishop e7, Bishop g5 pressures this one, which is supporting the center. We see castles, and now finally, white takes here, saddling black with that isolated queen's pawn, IQP, and strategically, that's a weakness in the long term, can become weak in end games, but in the meantime, it gives your pieces active play. You know, you've got open files, you've got outposts. So in the meantime, we get bishop e6 played to defend that weakness. Now knight d4, hopping into this newly vacated square since the pawn captured here. Now bishop takes on c5, and here white makes a mistake. The best move was actually retreating this bishop to support the knight, it's under fire of course, and if you see a mass series of chain, uh, exchanges on d4, well that actually helps white, you start exchanging pieces, the pawn's firmly blockaded, and you can soon gang up on it. But what we see in the game is knight takes on e6. Now it's often a good idea to pick up the bishop pair if you can. White keeps theirs, which can be a good long-term trump. But here, you've helped black actually support this mighty center now. Sometimes you can get it rumbling with e5 and so on. And you've opened up this rook, activated it in one move. Maybe the queen can even slide. So there's dynamic ideas for black. We get bishop g4 now. So at least consistent with the strategy of damaging the pawn structure and then targeting the backwards pawn. And you're using the fact that the bishop can't be taken. This one's pinned, of course. So queen d6 unpins, also protects the pawn. And now the bishop drops back, getting away from the knight's attack, but keeping an eye on this pawn. Rook a8, the final piece, joins the party. Queen d2 activates, good move, connects these rooks but you do step into this pin, which is now taken advantage of by Marshall. That move wasn't forced, by the way. I mean, that bishop was on a great diagonal. You could have also gone h6 and then looked to rumble with e5. But okay, this still sets up a nice idea of hopping with the knight. So white now takes on f6, gives up the bishops, but it is actually a good move because knight e4 was a significant threat. Now we get rook ad1, supporting this unprotected queen. Keeping an eye on d4, you know, now you can hop, and even though black can take here, white can take here, white's actually doing well. So you don't want to jump into that one prematurely. The pawn doesn't push, we see queen c5, stepping off the d-file pin, pressuring down here, and now we get some active counterplay from white with queen e2. Abandoning the defense of the c3 square, allowing Marshall to shatter the pawns, which he does, Pawn recaptures, queen takes, and now here's the idea from white. A sneaky tactic with rook takes on d5. 
And this is using pins because if the pawn recaptures, not only does the rook drop back, but you're actually getting mated after this and this and king goes and that's mate in the corner of the board. So clearly running back here, you can't capture that rook, it's immune. So what does Marshall do? Well, this is his idea. Knight d4, activating that horse into the position, also defending this pawn as well as looking forward. And now the queen needs to maintain this pin or find some kind of attacking move or else if you move, you know, queen d1 or something, simply the rook is dropping and that's no good. Now the most natural move here, or you could argue the most natural, is actually the best. Queen e4, just staying on the file, maintaining that pin, maybe rook f4 was bothering Levitsky, but if you go for this one, then you don't capture here and blunder this knight e2 check, you just go queen e5. You still maintain the pressure, and there's no rook f5, because of course the bishop covers the square. Game goes on, but we didn't see queen e4. We saw queen to h5, a sneaky move, hitting the unprotected rook on e8, now saying you take here, I'll take here, of course. If you go g6, now I'll go queen e5, pressuring your rook, everything like that, maintaining the pin. But you don't have to do those things. You can bring this second rook over to the f file. You know, you're encouraging black to improve that piece. Never actively improve your opponent's piece, as they say. And now there's huge pressure here, plus the rook is on prees. So after rook e5, saving the rook, covering the e2 square from a knight hop, along with the queen. Well, now there was already a winning move for Marshall, but he goes for something way more beautiful. So what could he have played here? Do pause if you want to see the best move that wins on the spot. So the move he could have played is rook takes on f2, because after rook takes, you now check in the corner, not on e1, the rook is covering that square. But by coming back here, sure white can chuck away all the material, but eventually they're forced to do this, and you take, and that's checkmate, or you can take with the rook, you know, you can complete it in different ways. But running back here, after rook e5, we don't see takes, instead we see rook h6, setting up something way more beautiful. Now this queen slides to g5. Why g5 and not g4? Well, white was looking to stay protecting this rook. Because if you go to other squares, there are these discovered checks going on, and then the queen was hitting this rook and, you know, threatening to take it in one, if that queen was on, say, g4. So queen g5 played, but now we get the pieces just flowing into the attack. What's the first move here that Marshall played? I'm sure you can guess it. It was in the thumbnail. He plays rook takes on h3, sacrificing that rook for bishop, but it's immune. You cannot take, or you land knight f3, royal family fork, all the pieces dropping, but okay, the queen first and foremost. So we don't see pawn takes. Rook c5 was now played. I mean, it's desperate stuff. White is a minor piece down, but you do hit the queen. You know, in dreamland, you're going here and mating or something or whatever, playing for tricks. But this is where Marshall unleashes what's gone down in chess history as the most beautiful queen sack ever played. He plays the stunning queen to g3 a move that looks impossible because it can be taken by two separate pawns. Plus you've got this here. I mean, look at that for a move. Are you kidding me, right? And this actually forced resignation from Levitsky. Why? Well, let's explore these variations. Now, if you take with the pawn, let's say you capture towards the center, very natural. Well, then knight e2 is not just check, but mate. I think they call this one Anastasia's, right? When you use knight and rook. Equally, if you go with the F pawn, same theme of check, the rook's on the F file, of course. So after the king steps, you deliver this mate, no good. And if instead of taking with either of those pawns, you take with the queen, well, now there's still check. The king still sidesteps, the queen drops, check. And this time you can't take with this pawn, it's pinned. What if you take with this one? That's mate, simple enough. What if you simply step back with the king? Well, now you can go check, king goes, and you play this end game. You're simply a minor piece up, 
completely winning. So in every variation, it's just losing. If you take that queen, what happens if you try and not take the queen? You know, what's the actual threat from black? Well, the threat is to go queen h2, checkmate. So what if you go queen e5, x-raying the diagonal, stopping the mate? Well, now there's two different ways to mate, again, using this knight. One of them is knight e2, check. And if the queen takes, well, you've been decoyed, we deliver the mate. If the king sidesteps, now you deliver the mate with the rook. And if instead of knight e2 check, you go knight f3 check, well, this is the most beautiful of all. I mean, look at those three pieces stood in front of the pawns. Looks like it should be impossible. But now, after the king sidesteps, you crash through with the rook, not the queen. And again, this is a checkmate. So the final position was here. After queen g3, the board was apparently showered with gold coins. Now that's a questionable account, by the way. There's a lot you can read on Wiki, where they say, well, no, it wasn't. They were putting down some money just to sort out wages. Or apparently Marshall's wife says, no, no one even threw a penny or something I read on Wiki. So some different accounts. But either way, very, very cool game. Worthy of being showered in gold coins, let's be honest. And this was played in a tournament over 110 years ago. Just incredible chess. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you want to see any more famous games. Always helps me out to get some great ideas. And if you want to see another epic game of chess, then do see the video on screen. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.